very much for this nice uh, presentation. Really, as I was listening, I was like, oh, is that really me? Uh, obviously, yes. So um, I'm really happy to see so many people from uh, around the world in uh, this uh, seminar, webinar, really. And today, um, what I'm planning to do is really to be very practical and share my experience with you uh, in um, designing your own materials, adapting your own materials, and uh, helping you make your classes a little bit more, um, I don't know, lively, um, up to date if necessary. These are the things we are going to um, work on and discuss together. In a moment, I'm going to share uh, the presentation with you with the major points. But I would like to thank those of you who um, answered uh, the questions in my questionnaire, uh, the one that uh, precedes this webinar. One reason why I wanted um, to hear from you was actually to know uh, who I will be working with today. And I'm uh, really excited to see that we share a lot of things um, together. I mean, we share more or less the same teaching background. We cover all the levels from nursery to uh, college and university. Um, we work with institutions that uh, allow us to adapt uh, textbooks that we are working with and we are free most of us are free to choose what to color our lessons with so this extra material that we will be talking about today so um another another thing uh that uh, i really like is that um we are a group of uh, professionals who have uh, different um teaching uh, practice, like there are, there are people in this community who are still student teachers, but there are also people like me who, who have worked um, uh, and who have been teaching for, for more than 20 years. And the good thing is that all groups find it uh, necessary to improve, to learn something new and to actually develop both personally and professionally. I hope this is, uh, this is something that um, um, we will all uh, have in the end. Another thing that um, really um, made me happy today as I was um, looking at the final, final uh, contributions to that file was uh, your questions really. Uh, I'm really happy that um, they are in line uh, with what we are going to, to be working on together. And there is one question that I would like to start with um, dealing with um, <clears throat> um, advice and things to consider uh, when we create and when we adapt materials. So I think... Um, um, the whole session, the whole webinar will be focusing exactly on trying to answer that question. So what kind of things we need to take into consideration when um, uh, offering uh, and when creating our own materials? And it was brilliant timing and brilliant combination with the previous speaker because um, um, as you have heard, uh, my colleague was talking about doing and uh, suggesting right instructions, which is really important when you create um, your own materials. Instructions is the 50% of uh, completion of the whole task. All right, so this is... Um, this is what we are going to do now. Um, I do hope you will be able to see my beautiful presentation in a second. And we are going to start. Uh, let me, ah, okay. So I did start sharing, but this is not what I was planning to share. Right. 
um, not very professional, but okay. You see the whole presentation from uh, from actually the wrong uh, from the wrong end. Sorry, don't do this with your students. I was going to ask. In fact, when we create materials, um, what exactly is a learning material? Like, what do we consider as a learning material? And if you could suggest your answers in the chat, I will try to follow your answers. So what is a language learning material, in your opinion? Mm -hmm. All right, so we have answers from Natalie and Clara. Yeah, an example of natural language in a memorable context. Good. Realia. Thank you, Elena, for that. Yeah, books, charts, videos, worksheets. Exactly. So posters, you name it, flashcards. Uh, great. Um, uh, answers keep filing. And I'm really happy because, well, we have an agreement on that part. Probably you have heard it already being a teacher that for a teacher, especially a teacher of uh, language, anything can count as a learning material. And I remember times when I was, you know, traveling abroad or in my own country, collecting stuff and people at home saying, okay, why? And I would say, all oh, right, it might come handy at some point. Uh, all right, so any text or a, uh, audio and printed, this is what Olga is writing. So I have a few, um, I have a few examples here of what really counts as um, learning material, depending on how you use it in, um, in your class. So these could be handouts with reading, uh, this could be any text that you find in a book or online and you like it and you prepare something for your students. All right, yeah, <laughs> good point, Brennan. Teachers and therapists are great collectors, absolutely. Um, so yeah, these are things uh, that you can see uh, in, um, in the slide. So audio materials, uh, video materials, anything you, you find useful um, in different websites, everyday objects, perhaps. Um, social media, uh, we can't do without them um, these days. And realia, as somebody mentioned before. Now I'm showing you here, a realia. Does anyone know what this is? The last picture. If there are people from Bulgaria, Romania, maybe Ukraine, you will be able to recognize this, but it always makes a nice lesson um, on March the 1st uh, in Bulgaria. So this is something we exchange uh, on, um, on the 1st of March, wishing Ah, yeah, Marty Shore. Uh, we call it Martinica in, uh, in Bulgaria. Um, and yeah, this is, uh, by the way, this is something that I saw in Jordan as well, but it's not exactly Martinica, but it's pretty, pretty similar uh, as a combination of colors. So we can really uh, organize a whole lesson um, around the ticket, around the Martinica, or around the text um, in, uh, in, uh, in, in a class. Now, <clears throat> I've asked a few colleagues uh, I'm working with. Um, I also asked this or a similar question in the, in the questionnaire that I sent before the seminar. So what will urge you to create your own materials? Like what will make you wish to invest extra time, extra effort um, to prepare something different from your textbook? 
Now, this is a question you can ask yourself, and this is a question we will return to. But <clears throat> this is what my colleague said. So the first one said, all right, okay, so I came across this article about pet robots. We are covering a similar topic with my students on technologies and robots. So I thought it might be a good thing to, to work on. Um, another reason, well, all right, I think we will all share this opinion. I do. The course book is great, but we all get tired and bored if we only stick to it. And I'm really um, happy because uh, in the questionnaire I sent you, there was, um, there was a similar question and you answered that you have the choice to escape from the book from time to time. You do have one, but you are allowed and encouraged to uh, actually uh, find other things. For me, this is a really, really valid and relevant point. I would share it with my colleague 100%. Another good reason, um, I ran out uh, of exercises on present perfect in the course book, but some of my students definitely need more practice, so I had to do something. I don't know if you will agree, but this is also a very um, reasonable um, aspect in our job. Like we have the, the book, we have the teacher book, we have extra resources, but sometimes it's not enough. Sometimes we need more. And this is when we turn to either searching for materials or creating, uh, creating our own. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. More reasons. I'm not sure if you're going to agree with those. Um, we're studying how, how to express emotions in English. So a student suggested to have a look at different emojis we're using. And that was a nice break from the routine. Um, uh, the reason I was wondering is whether you are the kind of teacher to actually follow what your students want in a classroom, or you need to follow a particular curriculum and don't have time for, for extras like this. But getting ideas from, from students can really make your classroom a little bit more inclusive. Uh, and a little bit more perhaps interesting for the students. Uh, it's, it's really up, uh, up to you to, to decide whether this could be your reason. And do you realize how many regular past forms this song has? My students will have another more exciting way to memorize them. Now, Honestly speaking, that was my answer. I mean, I kind of falsified the materials here, but I really like using uh, songs in my class. And there are really extremely good examples of songs that can be used for uh, learning different tenses, vocabulary, um, whatever is necessary. Um, there are two drawbacks um, to using this, and I will go back to, to those in a second. But songs are really a good um, um, source for language. And um, I just love new apps. AI tools are so cool to experiment with. Student, uh, students like it a lot. Um, I don't know if this could be something you relate to, because I know that in different parts of the world, uh, using mobile phones in class is not exactly allowed, but using those apps uh, is something that students can do, uh, can do at home. And in that sense, there was a question in, in the pre-webinar uh, questionnaire from, from somebody uh, from the audience who, who are here. 
So how virtual resources can help students inside the classroom? I'm not sure about the inside the classroom for the reason I already gave. Maybe we don't have the chance, not all of us have the chance to do it in class, but outside the classroom, it's a really good, uh, good way to practice, good way to learn, good way to be part of the 21st century uh, as you learn uh, languages. So um, I'm pretty sure you're aware of different apps. I myself tried some while learning Chinese, for example, and it's really, uh, really useful. Uh, so don't, don't hesitate uh, and use it if you can. Now, I have a question here. So what would be your reason? So if you have uh, some reason that you haven't heard, uh, but you would like to share it with the world, this is your time in, uh, in the chat. Meanwhile, I will have a look at your previous uh, answers. Yes, Natalie says, I use interactive apps, Kahoot, mm -hmm. Mentimeter, uh, exactly, Padlet. These are, these are really helpful. Um, all right. Anyone? Yeah, videos and articles. Uh, okay, so some uh, applications that you use. Good. So it's, it's, really, it's really a personal choice. What, what you find uh, easy to operate, easy to, to manage. Uh, and uh, these, are, these are things you need to really uh, decide for yourself. Right, so keep writing. Uh, this is giving uh, your colleagues more ideas. Mm -hmm. And we move on to a basic question, actually. Uh, one, of the, one of the main reasons why we're here today. Now, adapting and creating, as you know, are two different things. And um, they are equally engaging. They have their force and uh, pros and cons. And they are equally able to, uh, you know, skyrocket your class or, um, you know, make it go down. Um, it, it, it is something to, to take into consideration. So, Whenever we talk about adapting, that already means that somebody else has created a, a learning resource somewhere, whether this is a textbook, something you find on the net, something your colleague prepared, um, if you take it, but you change it a little bit, that's already adapting. Um, you may change the purposes, you may change uh, the questions, keep the text, for example, but change the questions, adapt it to, to suit a lower level. This is, uh, this is already working with uh, something that you uh, got access of. Creating is um, something more of an effort you make to, to actually design something that is yours. Um, a new task based on a, on, a, on a new text, taking a song, but uh, you know, preparing materials um, in, in, relating, uh, in relation to that. Um, make a test based on a text. These are all creating materials. You start from from scratch. And you usually base uh, your new materials on something that authentically exists somewhere. So you take a book or you take something that has some uh, uh, copyrights. <clears throat> and this is something that we need to consider. Now, I am not sure if you if you can see well, 
but this is an example of uh, something that I have uh, done for my students. So one of the activities uh, is um, creative, you know, something that I designed. The other one is just adaptation of uh, materials. Can you tell which one is which? I know that it's very difficult to read. I can't read it myself, but I'm pretty sure you can see link one, link two, link three, and you can see a text here. Okay. All oh, right. Okay. So you're catching up. Uh, I'm trying to to have a look at the chat. Uh, I can see that you're uh, catching up. And Melissa, thank you for sharing the the links. Uh, I was uh, planning to to recommend as well. So yeah, uh, as you can see, the first task is more or less something that I try to design, having in mind my students. Yeah, I know uh, Al Zahara. I know that it's not readable, but the first one is actually linking uh, and organizing how students should approach the links. And if you if you happen to click click on those links, you will see that they will open ready-made materials. Um, exactly, yeah. Thank you, uh, Shi Tao. Links are adapting, and the above mentioned is the creative type. Well done. Uh, that was the point. Now, two major dangers, both when creating and adapting materials. A chance to violate copyrights, willingly or not so. Exactly, Olivia. Yeah, copyright is the, the biggest danger. Um, whether you 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 create something from scratch, you're still taking somebody else's uh, writing or somebody else's product. So the least thing you can do is mention this in uh, in in the in the credits. So um, this is what um, I did with the pictures uh, that you could see and will see. Um, people need to acknowledge and we as teachers need to acknowledge uh, our sources at least. Um, another another mistake, uh, another, another, sorry, not mistake, but danger. When we, <clears throat> when we take materials that are available, um, sometimes we over rely on their credibility. So it happened to me, like I like, um, I like uh, an exercise. I take it from the internet. I, I ask my students to, because they're interactive or something, I ask my students to do it. And I realize that there is a spelling mistake or there is a grammar mistake. Uh, Pedro, I will answer your question in a second. Um, it's, it's something that you can check at least before you do. Sometimes another, another problem arises when I, when I see an exercise, let's say practicing, uh, model verbs, uh, I see two or three examples that fit my, uh, my purpose and I stop looking, you know, I over trust, uh, the resource. And when we start doing it, I realized that there are examples of other models that haven't been covered. So uh, will um, will not uh, will not meet my purposes for, for for that material. So this is really really important when you use um, adapted materials when you take something from the from the net. Just check it out thoroughly spend some moments uh, to avoid uh, to avoid losing face in front of your students in class and saying, oh, silly me, I haven't checked that. Uh, so yeah, these are these are ways to uh, to overcome, to meet the dangers. 
um, you will see that uh, for uh, designing your own materials, there are a lot of um, free uh, pictures or free videos that you can uh, take from a Creative Commons page. And there are uh, references. Usually there are references to, to show you how those pictures can be used or videos can be used. So do not, uh, do not uh, trespass or violate uh, other people's work without their permission. If there is a possibility to ask, like you can ask your colleague if you can take their, uh, their material for your own purposes, then do it. To answer Pedro's question, um, I, I'm not sure I uh, am the final, a final authority here. For all I know, uh, AI uh, platforms, they generate text uh, based on uh, existing models. And um, you, can't, you can't really quote the person who created the text, but once you start using it, at least this is what people say, don't take my word for that. Um, it becomes uh, uh, your possession, so to say. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to go into detail um, because it is still developing and I wouldn't like to give wrong answers and giving permission when I don't have the right to. So it's, uh, it's something to check with uh, all AI platforms. Avoiding plagiarism um, is uh, something uh, we do when we quote, even when we adapt a text whenever we say it is adapted from, it's our way to acknowledge other people's work. So yeah, it's, um, it's at least an attempt to, to deal with plagiarism. And this is something uh, uh, we need to uh, teach our students as well. I think ChatGPT and all other AI platforms deserve a special uh, webinar. Probably uh, the British Council will uh, answer that necessity. And thank you for, for sharing the uh, quoting page in the, in the chat. Now, right, uh, Melissa has started sharing the materials I wanted to uh, draw your attention to. So um, two or three reliable pages for young learners, for teens and for adults, uh, something you can't ma uh, make mistakes with will be the teaching English, learn English uh, uh, webs uh, websites. And these are really um, uh, sources to be uh, freely used and trusted because they were they were created by uh, by professionals, and there is a logic in um, uh, behind each exercise there. Um, right, I already said that. And since the since the title of um, the webinar was six easy steps, this is this is what. Uh, I'm going to do in the remaining uh, moments. Now, why six? I don't know. It's more than five, but it's less than seven. So it sounds like a good number. And in Bulgaria, where I teach, uh, six is the highest possible uh, grade. So six sounded like a good idea. Uh, these are all based on my practice, so I, I, I do hope they will be practically useful uh, to you as well. And they are, in fact, six questions. And when you ask those questions, um, you will know both when to start and when to stop. Like, if you don't have an answer to a question, just stop there. Uh, and your answer should be a reasonable one. 
<clears throat> so question, uh, uh, question number one, why on earth am I doing this? Remember, I shared my colleagues' answers to that, what will urge you to uh, create your own material or to adapt your own material. Um, when creating, if you don't have an answer, just go and find something that is already there. And remember, check for mistakes, try not to violate rights. Um, the easiest is to start with the teacher's book or additional web resources that go with each publisher. So there are plenty and they might be more than enough. But you need a real purpose to invest some time in preparation and it's always uh, time and effort. So if you don't have an answer to number one, am I doing it? Why? You stop here and you forget about it. Then question number two, who am I doing it for? It's a tough one because you might be teaching different uh, age groups. You might be teaching uh, students or nursery uh, pupils. We need to take these into consideration. So know your learner. So what age you're doing in it? And uh, with this, I'm answering uh, a question in the in the uh, materials that the, the pre-webinar uh, quiz. If it's for young learners, you do this starting from the age. It says a lot about the type of learner you're going to do it. You know, it's uh, um, it's something to, to take into consideration. So level of English, if your students are A1, um, there is no need to, to make a, an exercise that is for B2, right? Um, if, uh, if there are special requirements, like you need to um, prepare them for a test or you need to um, do a reading practice, uh, two reading practices more, um, then this is how you organize your uh, preparation. Personal interests, it's, it's good to know uh, in advance because as the previous speaker said, sometimes when you believe you have prepared the best uh, learning material with the best instructions, you realize that your students don't like it. You like it, you love it, you enjoy it a lot, but they find it boring. So maybe we should start vice versa and start with, uh, with the student. So what they need, what their personal interests are. And again, uh, once you know that, why you're doing it, who you're doing it for, then the next is to think about, all right, so why? I mean, what am I planning to achieve with that? Is it to develop certain skills? Is it to have fun in class? Is it uh, to break the ice? Is it to cater for some particular need? Uh, I, I can see in my students. Um, if you know your aims, and if you know uh, why and who you're doing it for, you will be able to, to find the right material. So if you are planning to develop reading skills, probably it's uh, better to focus on uh, some preparing different reading tasks and not include a lot of video, uh, for example. Uh -huh. And uh, another question that I learned the hard way, how much time do I need to prepare the material? Uh, it is very important because most of us are really, really busy 
and we teach different uh, levels, we teach different groups, age groups of students, and if we start to prepare for each class, as some of you said uh, you do, uh, it's turning into a very daunting task. So it's, uh, it's really um, a good question to ask, how much time am I ready to, to invest in that? So um, here comes AI again and the internet as, uh, as a whole. It's easier these days, but then again, there are different uh, questions to consider. Uh, just like Pedro said, we don't, uh, we, we're not sure um, how much of this is your, ours. But AI can help us ask questions faster. Uh, AI can uh, help us uh, very quickly design sentences with present continuous, for example, on the spot, really. So it's good to, uh, to use this opportunity as well. Um, yes, Sara, you can, <laughs> but but again, you need to check before before you give it to students. That's the tricky thing with AI. Whatever you produces, it's uh, it's something you as a person, as a teacher, check uh, before you pass it on to students. Now, question five. Um, uh, do I plan to reuse the materials I have created? Um, I would say that the default answer is always yes, although you don't know how. Uh, that's why it's good to file it somewhere, have a general framework of what kind of things you were planning to, to achieve with, with this. And then just remember when a new year starts and a new class comes, oh, I had that uh, uh, ice-breaking activity based on, on, on that uh, joke. Should I, should I search my files and adapt it for, for the purposes of new class? So yeah, it is a good uh, thing to actually make a list and store your materials somewhere. Um, but, but, um, nothing lasts forever in this world. So links disappear, sites disappear. Um, do not leave it to the last moment if you're planning to reuse, um, uh, materials. Yes. And of course the needs and interests of our students are different. So we need to take this into consideration. Um, I am pretty sure because you are here today and you have attended three seminars, some of you, uh, you are most probably a member of some community, professional community. So if you are and if you're confident in the materials that you're using and preparing, you can easily share those with, with your communities and save time um, to other teachers. Usually there are blogs, uh, there are places where, can, where you can store your materials and where you can uh, get materials from. Um, just do it. I mean, don't keep it to yourself. You might be saving somebody, somebody's life, like uh, a last minute, uh, last minute request from a teacher. Uh, and it, it creates really a good feeling of, you know, uh, community. And question number six, can I really do it? Um, if you get as far as this step, it means that, of course, you can and you know how. And you probably just need an extra support. So I'm pretty sure that even if you're not an experienced teacher yet, very soon you will be, and you will see that um, um, this is not a daunting, it's not so difficult to prepare something uh, for your students. 
it's not uh, it's not like we are doing a new textbook or we are uh, planning to do something big like uh, a new curriculum or a new um, sequence of lessons. No, creating a material, as we said, can be uh, can be based on uh, on this, for example. So you you see something in front of yourself and in front of yourself, and you say, ah, but I can use this in my class. Ah, okay. So what can I do with it? How can I use it? It's the realia we were talking about in the, in the beginning. And yes, as the, one of you said here, uh, yeah, Mervin. Uh, yeah, materials should always be stored, but we sometimes forget to do it. Like we leave it, we postpone it. It's like the photos we take on a vacation. We take the photos and then we forget about them. And well, we start erasing, freeing space and oops, here they are. And you say, oh, right, I can use that. Um, right, okay. And that was pretty much uh, everything I wanted to focus on. I know that there will be questions. Um, so instead of a conclusion, what I would like you to, to have a look at is just what I was telling you about. A question, very briefly, think about your students, the ones that you're teaching at the moment. What do you think you can do with this? Any ideas will be highly recommended as the new uh, school year has just started for, for a lot of us. So what can you do with this? Any ideas? I will be reading in the chat. And now, um, if there are any questions or something that we need to uh discuss together joe and um, probably you'll be the one yeah. to ask those questions yes wonderful okay so thank you desi um it's always so good for the soul i think as a, as a teacher creating your own material so thank you for all of those practical tips um and also for reminding us to, to start with your students. So that's quite inspiring, isn't it? When you're thinking, OK, I'm going to be doing this with this specific group of people. What are their interests? What are their needs? And you, you go from there. Um, I don't know if Desi, are you still there? You look like a lost connection. Ah, yes. Yes, I am. Ah, okay. I am here. Okay. I think there is some uh, some breakdown breakdown okay. in um uh, in the connection. Okay, that's good. We're back. Okay, perfect. Okay, so so Desi, um, there were lots of questions in mm. the chat. Is there anything in particular that you want to ask about, or should we choose some uh, together? Um, I couldn't, I couldn't really follow the chat very closely, okay. so I will be relying on your, okay. uh, uh, okay. on your help here. Okay, I tried that's to okay. answer questions as they were showing and as I was talking, but I'm not sure yes. I managed to do all of them. Okay, okay, that's great. So there was um, a lot of interest, people asking different things about mm -hmm. uh, AI. Um, lots of different questions but what what is AI good for when we're creating materials and what do you think it's not so good for have you got any okay. thoughts I will be I will be talking from my own experience um, and I will start with the good things um, it makes things faster right for sure so that's the main 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 um, I don't know um, advantage of AI because it honestly creates um, examples, the ones that you ask. Uh, for example, I did it with my students during the break. If I can see that we need more practice with present continuous, as I mentioned, I just uh, ask, please write a sample of sentences with present continuous only. So I have like 
10 sentences in 10 seconds. Yeah. And it's really good to have because no matter how good we are as teachers, how creative, how, um, uh, I don't know, um, excellent uh, we know English, sometimes we just get stuck. And this is where uh, this helps. Definitely. Like I can't produce 10 sentences that won't be boring using the same grammar structure. This is something AI does and exactly. we can use that. Yes, and you can also specify the, the level, um, can't you? The CEFR level you want. Can you write sentences or a text at A2 level, for example? Okay. When we have a text already, and this is really help. Personally, AI teaches me to be more polite. Okay. Uh, did you lose me again? I, I lost you. I'm not sure if it's, if it's here or at your end. Um, because... Uh, Okay, I hope you can still still hear me. <laughs> Could you hear me, or, or was I'm not sure if it was here or with with Yeah, Debbie. it's fine. I think it's fine with you. Okay. Um, oh, here we go. I hear Back. you. You're on mute, Desi. I think. Sorry. Yeah. Are we back now? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, this Perfect. is one of the disadvantages of any AI or any technology. You can get lost uh, in a second. But yeah, all right. So the good things that it's fast, it can be your help. But the bad things is that um, you're not sure, just like uh, people said in, uh, in the chat, you're not sure who's uh whose text you're using mm -hmm. yeah i mean the copyright mm -hmm. is something that is not well uh, decided yet and uh, i think that would be the main 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 predicament for the moment yes so it's always good then to to actually to be really clear and to say this text was created by and of GPT course or whatever and of course, it, it can lead to kind of uh, uh, cheating, uh, you know, increase mm. on cheating because, uh, yeah, you start reading uh, works and, uh, you know, essays generated, but this is, uh, this is something all of us uh, will have to find a way to, to deal with. Yes. And um, I think this will change. I think this is uh, something Nick Peachy was talking about, but we'll need to change in accordance with uh, uh, AI developments. Like what do we teach, how we evaluate and assess our students? This will be the main challenge perhaps this year. Yes, yes, definitely. So, um... Just looking at the, we've got some interesting questions in the in the Q and A. So Almudena says, "I would like your opinion about ICT. So how much time should we spend using technology uh, in EFL classes? And if you think it's a good idea to mix them with uh, realia, so can we mix kind of real life things with technology? And how does that help us to create classes?" Um, we can ask AI to actually make a lesson plan for us, giving uh, different uh, samples, say, okay, I want to use my uh, summer things uh, uh, for, for the class that I will be teaching with primary students, and it will come up with some ideas and we just do them. But I don't think we need to overspend time on creating our own materials. Like um, we have great textbooks, everyone has a textbook and this is the core. And depending on the context, sometimes we just need to cover the textbook and the, yeah. and the materials that are there because this is a must. I mean, this yeah. is something that everybody must know by the end mm -hmm. of the year. Mm -hmm. And not many of us have this luxury of actually um, 
spending extra time with extra activities. So find your own measure. This is my personal advice. Um, don't overdo it if you if there is no need to that. Like only do it if it's extremely necessary in a particular situation. And there was a question. Uh, you can always skip anything from any class if you see that it's not interesting, even though you spend two hours preparing it, then of course you don't do it if no one is interested and if if it doesn't uh, you know meet your aims. Right. Honestly, sacrifice your labor, but make the students uh, you know participate in in uh, in what is meant to be their time with you. Right. That's a really good point, I think, about being flexible and, and not just sticking to your plan. Yeah. Flexibility and don't get overworked. As I said, OK, it's great to be doing it, but don't uh, don't do it when you don't have to do mm -hmm. it. Right. OK. Save your save your uh, save yourself for something more creative when there will be a need for that. Right. OK. Not at any price. No. <laughs> no, exactly. Um, right, that's a really good point because, yeah, we as we know, as teachers, time is um, time is precious, and it can, you know, it, you could spend infinite time, couldn't you, uh, mm -hmm. preparing materials. Um, Maybe use your students as your main sources. Like, right. have a survey in the beginning. Like, um, you have your plans, but try to have a match between your plans and reality. Because yeah. I have had lessons with a very boring picture or a text, which turned out to be very interesting for the students, but it was boring for me. <laughs> and <laughs> it was something I was struggling with, but they liked it the way it yeah. was. And yeah. they were bored by my materials. So mm -hmm. I said, okay, yeah. miss, don't worry. Okay. We agree, <laughs> agree to disagree. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Okay, so I think we've just got time for a quick question from uh, Jade here. Do you have book recommendations on how to create learning materials? Um, finding resources? I think um, no book is uh, the book that you're going to need. Uh, I would say something, I will probably repeat myself, uh, maybe trust yourself more because no book will know your exact situation. You are in control and there is no right and no wrong when it comes to teaching, even if it's against all the methodological uh, expectations. If it works, if it works for your group, then just do it the way your heart is telling you it should be. Most probably, you can't be wrong with that. Uh, you could uh, you could open any methodological book on telling you how to create a test. Perhaps it's it's reasonable to do it because you need to uh, follow certain um, rules like uh, validity and stuff. But that's for testing. Yeah. When it comes to teaching your your own students, your own kids, just uh, just follow what your uh, um, teacher instinct is telling you is the right thing yeah. to do. Okay, I love that. So follow your heart. Yeah, follow your heart <laughs> and you can't be wrong. And even if you're wrong, your teacher, your students will tell you so. Yes, yes, you'll know. <laughs> or show you so. <laughs> Yeah, so do you have, you mentioned that maybe we don't need to be reinventing the wheel, I think someone said in the chat, or, some, or be realistic with time. Um, have you got any practical examples of things you can do with a, a course book to adapt it or, or extend activities? Uh, you mean uh, the one, the course book that you're using at the moment? Yeah, if you have to be... follow a course book, yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, I mean, whatever we said about adapting, is uh, very relevant even for uh, for using the textbook that you know you are working with because um, the authors might be telling you read the text yeah. or listen and read the text but you knowing your your students will probably choose to to do it differently like 
just read silently or um, take turns or role play. It's up to you and you're adapting the, the, the idea. Again, again, uh, follow, follow the, the rubrics, but you can always do it differently simply because you are a different person. And I don't know about uh, the teachers who are here, but I'm always different with different groups of students. Like with some, I will do it the same task. I will adapt it in one way. With another group, I will adapt it in a different way just because of the different uh, classroom dynamics and uh, just because we establish different sort of rapport with yeah. each other. Yeah. So okay, it never works you. in the same way. So yeah. you are adapting uh, on the go. Yes. Okay, so I love that. So we'll we'll, we'll have to leave it there because uh, because of time. But thank you so much. So I love those key messages of, um, you know, be be flexible, follow your heart, trust your instincts, and just try different things. But be be ready to to go in a different direction if you see it's yeah. not working. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Desi. It's been a really really interesting. Oh, it's session. been my pleasure. Really, <laughs> <laughs> hope I was useful. Uh... Definitely. Right. Definitely. So thank, thank you, you very thank much, you everybody. Um, you'll be sent all the all the information, the handouts, the useful links, and certificates for these sessions by email after the session. So don't worry if you haven't got absolutely everything. Okay. Thanks, Desi. Thanks, everybody. See you soon. Bye, everyone. Hope Bye. to see you again with your materials. <laughs> Bye. Bye.